Hello everyone and welcome back to Football Manager 2018 and a brand new experiment where we're going to take a look at how long it would take a tier 22 side in the English football pyramid to make it to the Premier League. Now obviously we're not going to play this through ourselves because it would take so long just to get them to the Premier League. Instead what we're going to do is run this experiment giving them as much money as they possibly need to get all the way to the top of the football pyramid and we will keep pumping that money in until they reach the top. I think this is going to cost billions and billions of pounds but we're going to do our best to get them there in 22 years if possible, get them straight up the league and to the top. Um, I envision this sort of going forward in kind of two to five year chunks early on um, and then moving a little bit faster. The issue I have is that this database is so enormous with so many leagues in every tier um, that it will take, I mean, it's taken me a day and a half just to go five years ahead already. So I'm sure it will take even longer than that the further we get into the game. So it will be a long term experiment, this one. Obviously, there'll be the Manchester United Legends series if you guys are enjoying that as well. Um, but it will take a bit of time. Today, we're going to go forward two years into the future and see what this database is made up of, which team we've picked, and how they do in the first couple of years. If you are looking forward to this experiment, do make sure you drop a like down below. Um, and if you could hit that subscribe button, it'd be a huge 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 help to the channel only about 15% of viewers actually are subscribed to the channel so there's so much potential for growth there if you guys could help me out and help me reach 20,000 subs by the end of the year that'd be brilliant um, now a little bit of information on this database you can download it yourself there is a link in the description it's from FM Scout if we go over to my other screen here you can see it's the lower leagues down to level 22 uh, created by uh, Dan at BHTFC um, and you can see that here are all of the leagues that is just the leagues in level 12 there is loads and loads and loads of leagues here it's not every single league in every single tier he's done a really comprehensive job especially of the higher up tiers I mean I think it's tier 16 which is just insanely huge Oh, sorry, tier 12, that's insanely huge. Um, I mean, that is so many different leagues in there. But down at the bottom, it does go down to the Mid-Sussex League Division 9, which is where we will be starting. And that team is going to have to rise up through all of these tiers to make it into the Premier League. Obviously, they'll be going through the Sussex Leagues uh, for the most part, you've got the West Sussex and East Sussex League as it becomes in Tier 12. And then as they get higher up, they'll start to fall into just kind of the South Divisions um, and then the Southern Premier, then the Conference South. And finally, they'll hit a National League of the Conference Premier, which will be interesting when they finally do get there. Um, here's the information to download it. It's really not that difficult. Just drag it, drag it to your database um, yeah, drag it to your database options and you can see some options here that you should make sure you untick. But overall, it's not too difficult. I did it pretty easily and I've got it loaded up here. Now, the team that we are going to be running are a team called Fairwarp. Um, I think Fairwarp FC, it doesn't even say. Um, at the moment, it says Fairwarp Recreation Ground is their stadium. I think in real life, it's the Queen Elizabeth II Ground, which is quite a cool little name to give it. Um, and... Yeah, a thousand capacity because I imagine it's just a thousand people standing around a field. Um, but they're an interesting team. They don't have a Wikipedia page. They're in a village that nobody has ever heard of. Um, and generally, I think they're just not that well known. So we're going to make them into hopefully Premier League champions as we go forward. Right now, um, they don't have any players whatsoever. They're all completely greyed out. So brand new starting point if you are going to take on this experiment as a playthrough then do let me know in the comments because i think it will be an interesting one i can't imagine how many of you have the time to try and take fair warp into the premier league but if you're up for taking that challenge on do let me know how you're getting on you can always let me know on twitter or down in the comments of this video um so what we're going to do is i have already run this forward a couple of times without success so the first thing is 900 million pounds. If we give them a billion, it'll tick over and they may and might end up in debt because of the way that this uh, does work. Um, I've given them a, a billion as a transfer or 100 million as a transfer key for the first season and a wage budget of a million pounds a week. I've not given them a sugar daddy because the sugar daddy will pump, up, pump in his own money, um, which would make me calculating how much I've given them given them a little bit difficult their facilities are exactly the same we we'll want to keep an eye on this at the moment they've got a maximum expansion capacity of 5,000 but just 1,000 capacity at the moment 
and a one for everything. So we can keep track of if they're putting money into that or not. Um, now the only other thing that I have controversially amended is their reputation. I've given them the reputation of a lower league, non-league team in the game as it already exists. Uh, to begin with, this was around the level of 50 um, uh, from memory. Um, but when I ran it forward like that, they didn't get promoted for about five, six years because um, they weren't spending money. Uh, because without that reputation, they cannot attract any professional players. I have also made the team professional, which I think will also help attract players because they won't be able to sign them if they're uh, non-professional. Um, so a few changes there, which will give them an advantage and make sure they do fire up the leagues very quickly. I can see them getting right up to the conference without too much trouble, but we'll have to see how that does progress. Um, and if the game, if the database holds up that far ahead. So it's going to be interesting to see how they go. Um, I don't think there's too much else that would be worth looking at here. I, we can have a look at their general information, um, but there's not too much there for you. Average season ticket price is £17.14. They do have five season ticket holders, which is nice. Uh, if we look at their historical overview, no trophies at the moment, no competitions. There is nothing here. Their landmark is that Chairman Scott Gardner was appointed in 2015. Um, but yeah, there's just nothing here. They don't even have a year founded at the moment, and I couldn't even find that on Google. So who knows? I, as far as I'm aware, they don't even have a football website. All they have is one page on the tourism for Fair Warp or something like that. It's a really odd little club. Um, but what we're going to do now is go forward one year. We'll see what transfers they made, what the club looks like, and if they've invested in any of their facilities. Well, we are now a year into the future, and as you can see, Fair Warp have had a pretty good first season. They beat uh, Crawley United second team 2-1 in their opening game, a last-minute winner there, before losing to Crawley Albion. Uh, Crawley has quite a few football clubs, it would seem. Um, Stones second team as well, and Skeynes Hill third team. We're up next. Uh, this league full of second and third teams, which is quite funny. The reason I picked Fairwell was they're pretty much the only team in this division that aren't a second or third team. But you can see they had started to sign a few players, getting 6 nil wins, winning pretty much everything to nil after this point. Um, doing very, very well. Um, until they made it to the semi-final of the East Grinstead. Oh, they played East Grinstead. Meads in the Tester Challenge Cup semi-final and in the final they did win the Tester Challenge Cup 3-1. The teams in this competition uh, I'm not too familiar with so let's have a look at that first round and you can see it was just Tier 8 uh, or Mid Sussex, Mid -Sussex tier, League 8 and 9 which is Tier 21 and 22 that were in here at the first round. Um, not all of the teams in the league I don't believe uh, we can have a look at the Mid-Sussex Football League. And there are 10 teams in here, so I guess it could have been all the teams. I'm not too sure, though. Maybe it's the bottom teams from the tier above. But when we look at the league table, you can see that Fairwell have won it. Uh, 16 wins, 2 draws, 50 points, and a 43 goal difference. Interestingly, the team that finished second managed to get relegated, which is unusual to say the least if we have a look at the rules you guys can have a look at this in a bit more detail by pausing the video um, certainly some interesting rules in order to enable that to happen uh, top two teams win promotion um, and yet the second team got relegated uh, so I don't really understand that it doesn't mention relegation in here but they have been relegated which meant the Fletchling 2 have got relegated this team yeah, they're still in the league, so I don't really know what's happening there. Possibly a glitch, um, but you could let me know in the comments if you understand why that's happened. But you can see they have won this league pretty well. All second and third teams in here, except for Fair Warp. Um, and they now go up to the Mid-Sussex Football League Division 8, where you can see not so many second and third teams now, or no third teams, but a few second teams, but a few proper teams in there as well. I imagine they'll be winning this pretty comfortably. Um, and then going up to Division 7, and then obviously this is where more t uh, or a, sec a second league gets added to this tier at least here. The Devon and Exeter League comes into play. Then you have the Myth Sussex Football League Division 6. Surrey come into play, Devon come into it, and the Isles, Isles of Scilly come into it. A league with just two teams, the Garrison Gunners and the Woolpack Wanderers. Um, then we go up to the Mid-Sussex Football League Division 5. 
um, and this is where we'll hopefully see them by the year 2022. Um, but you can see there's a few other leagues popping into this division now um, before you get to the West Sussex, Division 5 South and North. So, I mean, there are a lot of teams in West Sussex. Um, but it does keep going up and it will get harder and harder to track which league they happen to be in as we go forward. But let's go f and have a look at their transfers actually before we go forward another year. If we can get back to Fair Warp, um, we're right at the bottom here. And have a look at their transfer business. We can see they have brought in a couple of free transfers so far this season. But last season they did sign quite a lot of players. They're really doing the business. Um, they did sign someone for money from Curzon Ashton, who are a team in Vanarama National League North. Uh, so that is a big, big signing there. Um, and a lot of these players don't seem half bad, to be honest. So Rory Fallon signed from Curzon Ashton. Um, he's come in, played six, got one goal and one player of the match performance. He's bounced around FC United, Manchester, Trafford, the Manchester area generally before moving to Sussex. Um, other teams that they're picking players up from uh, seem largely to be other non-league teams and free transfers as well. Uh, South Shields, Stourbridge in there, um, Hales Owen Town. So mostly non-league teams. Boston United, our last billionaire experiment. They picked up Greg Smith, who's a striker from there, um, and he managed to get one goal in his one game. Um, if we have a look at their best 11, that will give us a good idea of who their best players were. You can see seven goals from midfield for Bradley Ede was their top scorer. There were four and five for the respective strikers. And overall, the best average rating was 7.33. Probably Bradley Ede with those seven goals from midfield. Certainly doing very, very well there. Um, and if we just look at their club details, you can see the reputation has actually gone up. Their finances, they've lost about 300 or 200 million already probably because of financial uh, sorry from taxation which does take that billion we gave them into account no change to their facilities as yet but i'm sure the chairman will get on that eventually and just looking at their landmark here you can see they did appoint matt Plummer as captain darren craddock as vice captain um they won promotion and then won the league and then won the cup which we've seen already so let's go forward another year and see how they get on well, we are another year into the future, and you can see that their preseason didn't go too well. They did lose to Gillingham there, uh, but an 88th minute goal there in preseason. They drew with Sittingbourne and then beat London Tigers, which is a great name. Um, and then as the league season kicked off, they did very, very well, getting a lot of wins here. They lost, conceded a few goals, um, but then the clean sheets started to come in. Big, big wins. They're playing in a couple of cup competitions here. You've got the Mid Sussex Junior Cup first round and the Parsons Cup. And the Test the Challenge Cup as well, actually. Um, I'm not sure why they're in the Junior Cup, but who knows. Um, and then the Test the Challenge Cup as well. It could be their youth team is in the Junior Cup. I don't even know. Um, but you can see they were doing well in the Cup competitions. Loads of games this season. They actually ended up playing in four finals. They clearly won the league. They won every game this season. But they won the Parsons Challenge Cup. They won the Brian Hall Challenge Cup. The Mid-Sussex Junior Cup. And the Tester Challenge Cup. So the Mid Sussex Junior Cup, if we look at the rules here, um, I don't know if it says anything on the type of players that can be played here. It doesn't look like it. So that would be why, if it is meant to be a youth cup, that they've got the. Um, yeah, if they've got the. Well, that's the rules for the first round. I mean, I don't think there's any difference there in the rules, but they have managed to win that anyway. Uh, if we look at the matches that were played, going back. You can see they beat Ashworst 3-0. But you can see from the first round here, there were a lot of teams in this, from Mid-Sussex 5 all the way down to Mid-Sussex 9. That's a huge variance in the Mid-Sussex Junior Cup, but they've managed to win that, beating everybody along the way. That's a very significant trophy to have picked up. Uh, the Brian Hall Challenge Cup, if we look at the players that were in the first round of this, I'm not sure why it keeps going to the rules, uh, if we go to the stages, it's just bouncing back to the rules, which is not what I want at all. Um, well, it would seem that this cup is a little bit broken because I can't actually see the schedule at all. Um, but you can see here the teams that are in there, um, and Fair Warp have managed to win it. We can certainly look at Fair Warp's history in this competition. Um, 
And you can see here, so which cup was this? This was the Brian Hall Cup. It looks like they went in at, at the second round stage, did they? Yeah, so they went in at the second round, which is interesting. The uh, Ifield Galaxy 3-0 then went into the semi-final and then into the final. So there can't be too many clubs in there, the maximum of four stages. Uh, then you had the Mid-Sussex Junior Cup final, which we've seen before, and the Tester Challenge Cup final, the Parsons Cup Challenge final. So you've actually won the quintuple this season, a huge, huge number of trophies. When we look at their competition screen, it already looks very impressive. Two Tester Challenge Cup victories now. You can see the two Mid-Sussex League titles at the bottom as well. Uh, the cup competition is more highly rated for reputation, but they've done incredibly well overall. And you can see we've already got that nice trajectory going straight up. I'm sure it's going to continue for some time. They've got a Lebanon player as their key player. Um, if we look at their transfer history for last season, you can see they did spend £95,000, which would explain an awful lot. They're picking up players from Burton Albion and Lane to the Orient now. Salford as well. Uh, Roser Longello. Their biggest signing, 19 years old, will be around for a little while. And from the left flank, he managed to get four games under his belt. Eight games in total, three goals in the Cups as well. Um, but they are signing a huge number of players. And we look at their senior squad. It is a very big squad. And they will be dominating this league and every league after it for a long time to come. As a result, they've even packed out their under-23s with players now. Um, and their under 18s as well. They're taking this very seriously and getting a lot of uh, reward for it as well. And they will win a lot of these early leagues without too much trouble. So I will go through them a lot quicker going forward. What we will do though is look at their club details. You can see that reputation has gone up again. Club attendance hasn't changed very much. Their money's gone down now. They've lost f over 400 million, which they will continue to do for a little while. It will stabilize at about 300 million. Uh, ordinarily, but you can see their reputation, their facilities. Sorry, we've gone up. They've got four training facilities, four youth facilities, two junior coaching, two youth recruitment. That is miles ahead of where it should be. And when we look at the landmark uh, screen, you can see here uh, they appointed a new captain. Their youth and training facilities were upgraded, um, and here were the cup wins as well. So they've still got the same manager in charge, but they are firing up the leagues now. Tim Tilly. The manager at the moment, he's got an 18 level of discipline, but not very much else going for him. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how long he sticks around. But the chairman at the minute, willing to pump the money into the facilities, which is what they need if they're going to continue to grow. Omar Bugil, uh, best player at the moment, the striker as well. When we look at his career stats for them, he managed to get 13 goals in seven games last season. So he needs to have a look at Fairwalk's best 11. Um, and you can see here, that they've got, if we go back to last season, 14 goals in 20 games for Jamie Lucas, but 13 in 7 for Omar Buigel. Um 8 in 11 for Masanka up front as well. So they're doing well. Everybody getting goals. 4 for their right back, 5 for the centre back. Only the left back not scoring there in the first 11 and the goalkeeper, of course. But overall, they're doing well with some 8.46, the highest average rating there. And overall, for their best 11, you can see there's 14 and 20. The club's top goal scorer, Jamie Lucas, still at the team, 23 years old, and was brought in on a free from Brackley Town. Got 10 and 11 last season, and I'm sure he'll get a lot more next season as well. Uh, so that is going to be it for this experiment. Do drop a like on the video if you're enjoying this experiment. Let me know in the comments if there's anything you'd like to see in the next video, and make sure to subscribe. It'd be brilliant if we could get um, up to that 20,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So do please hit that subscribe button. But until next time, see ya.